Hey, Dick and Leo, Lance Seidman here in my wife's favorite room of the house, and it's my gadget warehouse here with my Apple IIGS. And on the surface, you may think, well, it's not so unique, but you know what? This computer really had a, a special place in my heart. It was one of the first computers I got online with. In fact, uh, before I had a hard drive, I actually ran a BBS off of one of these and a 1200 baud modem. Uh, so it was really a, a special computer to me, and I've been upgrading it recently with some new hardware that some folks have created, and I finally got it to where I always wanted it to be. And so I want to show you my solid state disks and my ethernet card and my accelerator card. So let's crack this thing open and have a look. One of the first things I did when I took this out of my mother's basement was actually getting the memory to where I always wanted it to be. And back in the day, you really couldn't afford to uh, upgrade it easily. So I think now I've got like eight megs of RAM in here. And these are all individual chips that had to be put in by hand. I didn't do it. The person that had the, uh, the card did that for me. So I finally got all the RAM that I wanted. And the other thing that I always wanted was a hard drive. And those were really expensive back in the day when I first had got the computer. So never got that. But what I did buy is this neat card. And this is actually created by a hobbyist. And it's called the CFFA 3000. And it's a piece of hobbyist hardware. And what it does is it converts a compact flash card into a hard drive. And there's a couple of other cards like this on the market also. It was just introduced uh, this particular card in 2011, so it's a very recent development. And you put the card in here and it basically becomes a hard drive. So I can boot off of it and do everything you would normally do with a hard drive in there. But the other thing it has is a USB port. And what you can do with this is actually put floppy disk images on a USB drive, on a thumb drive, or even a full hard drive image and boot from that. You can even write disks back to the USB also. So if you want to archive uh, your old stuff and run it on an emulator later, you could do that. So um, really kind of a neat, neat device that uh, is still maintained. And a guy, I think a guy's name is Richard Dreyer who, uh, who puts that together. So I'm just going to put this card back in and I'll show you some other stuff. So here's another neat little card. This again is a more recent modern piece of hardware and this is Ethernet. And you can't do too much with it, but you can get it on the internet. And uh, we'll actually go into the twit.tv chat room, IRC room with it in a minute. Um, but again, a pretty uh, nifty little device here. Uh, you plug your ethernet in, pop it in a slot, and you're off and running. Now one card I can't show you very easily because it's so attached to the machine uh, is this one here in the middle. And this is a, a Transwarp GS. And I bought this on eBay a few weeks ago, uh, a few months ago. And I thought I was only getting like a 10 megahertz upgrade. It turns out it was a whopping 14. So that's pretty cool too. So let's put this thing back together and I'll show you how it works. One of the things I always liked about the 2GS was the satisfying sound its monitor made when you turned it on. It's got that, I don't know what that is. It's probably radioactive or something, but nevertheless, it works pretty well. So you hit the power button here and the Transwarp does this really cool thing. And you'll see this here in a second here. Look at that. Uh, it's going to run through its motions here, and I think I probably didn't set it to look for the compact flash drive right away. So this is going to take a few minutes. Even when it does find the compact flash drive, it takes a while for it to boot because, you know, this thing dates back quite a bit. So, well, maybe we'll play a little music while we wait. Okay, here we are at the GSOS desktop, and you can see here I've got actually all of my stuff from when I was a kid archived on here, including that old BBS I ran. So uh, pretty cool to have all that stuff safely backed up. Uh, what's neat about this compact flash card is that I can take it out of here, put it in my Mac or PC, and boot up uh, the 2GS and emulation as well, which is really cool. Now, one thing I tried to do and couldn't was I tried to connect to twit.tv's IRC server, but it kept kicking me out. So we're going to go to... Um, uh, an IRC server run by the A2 Central folks, and I'm gonna do that real quick. And here we are. We are going through the ethernet now, connecting, and needs to do whatever the heck it does. And here we are, and we can list channels and do all that kind of stuff. So it, uh, it does, and do, it doesn't do much on, on the Ethernet, but it does do enough that you can do some FTP and some other things uh, that you would do probably 15 or 20 years ago. So that was my Apple 2GS. Hope you guys liked it and uh, keep up the great work on the podcast.